So I've been on a hunt to finding the hottest gradients in After Effects. Something that's easy to make, super customizable, and can be saved as a preset so we can apply it with one click in the future. Now, I was having a little trouble finding a technique that checked all these boxes, and the default techniques, they just weren't cutting it for me. So I reached out to the super smart people on the r slash After Effects Discord, and my guy Unique, super smart fellow, check him out right here, dropped some knowledge on me that ultimately led us to the path of ultimate gradient success. Now, I believe we have discovered the hottest gradients of all time, which I'm going to share with you today. So let's get into it. All right. So the first thing I want to do is create a new solid. And let's go ahead and call this gradient. Actually, let's call this hot gradient. There we go. Make this comp size. Color does not matter. We're going to create our own colors. OK. Now the first thing I want to add to this is going to be a fractal noise. There we go. Looking good. We are going to keep the fractal type as basic, but we want to change the noise type to be spline. There we go. We're going to bump the contrast up a lot. Let's say something like this around 750. I have it at 775. Great. And we'll bump the brightness up a little bit around 25. That looks good. And now we want to drop the complexity down, down as low as it can go to one. There we go. So it's nice and blurry. No complexity for me. And let's go ahead and drop the transform menu open and uncheck uniform scaling. Now I want to stretch my gradient out here. This is going to be a preference thing, but I want to stretch this out real wide. And you'll notice you can only stretch this slider to 600, this slider here. But if you grab the number, you can stretch it as wide as you want. I don't know why you're limited by the slider, but the number you can go as wide as you want. I don't know. I didn't make the rules here. We'll do this like 700 something, and maybe the height will stretch up like three something, just so we get these really big blurry shapes. Cool. And now, and our evolution options, you know, we just want this to kind of just evolve over time, but I don't feel like animating keyframes, that's for the birds, okay? Let's add a little expression by alt clicking on the stopwatch here, and I'm gonna type in time times, I don't know, let's say 25, that should be fine. And actually what I'll do is, in front of this, I'll add value, plus time. That way, if you want to add any keyframes to it, you are free to add your own value to this. There we go. Now if we press play, that's how this expression is gonna move. Maybe it's a little fast, just lower that number or raise it to change the speed. Cool, so I think our fractal noise is looking pretty good for me. I'm gonna minimize this window and let's add our next effect. Let's add a fast box blur. We want to blur this fast. Maybe let's crank this up to like 400 or something. Something like this. 350 and repeat the edge pixels. So let's see. Look at that nice looking gradient, really obscure. Make sure you repeat the edge pixels. And then I'm also going to add now a levels to this. And we'll really just want to kind of crank this in just a little bit to get a little more defined shape. So if you turn this on and off, now we just get a little more uh, black and white definition. Cool. Now it's time for the main event. Let's add Colorama to this. And woo, look at this go. All right, so now with Colorama, we have this ancient little color wheel where our only option is to double click on here and type in RGB codes. We don't get a color picker or anything if you're on Windows like me. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use one of my favorite site coolers to grab some RGB codes. Let me snap this to the side here and squeeze my little window on here like this. Not so great, not the best method, but it works for me. And I will type in these codes into each one of these little wheels here. So let me go ahead and do this, 255 for red, 89 for green, 94 for blue. Now we have our first color, and I will go ahead and do this on each color in fast motion. All right, so we have all of our colors in the gradient, and if you want to add a new color, you just click to add one here, and if you wanna take a color away, then you pull it out like this and you can you know, feel free to move these colors around to change their, the amount of space that they take up in the gradient. You can move the order around obviously like this and you can, um, you know, you have all these different options inside the colorama to cycle through the colors um, and you can change the phase of the colors in here. You could also add a time expression to phase through the gradient here like this. You can also go back up to your fractal noise, open up the evolution options, and you have a random seed here. And if you change this, it will just generate a new seed of your gradient. So this is a good way to just kind of spice things up, change a new starting point of your gradient until you get something that you like. And since there's a stopwatch here, you could just animate this or put in an expression here to animate this over time if you're feeling extra crazy. So now another thing I'm gonna to do to this is I'm going to add one more blur onto this layer, a fast box blur again. Let's bring it up a little bit to around 30, 28. Repeat the edge pixels so we don't get these white edges here like that. Now our gradient is looking pretty good. Now, one thing you might be noticing, if you put this on full res, if you have a really nice monitor, you probably can't see it on this YouTube video. You might be suffering from some color banding. If you are suffering from color banding, there are a few things that we can do. One is, the simplest thing that we can do is we can add some noise to this. See if you can see some color banding in here. We can add some noise to this layer. So let's go ahead and add some noise. Turn off color noise and sweet spot is around one to three percent. So at one percent noise, 2% noise, and it should take care of the color banding. This is my preferred way to go, a little bit of noise that still does not work. What you can do is you can change the color depth of your project. So maybe you are working in eight bits per channel, you can change it to 16. You could also change it to 32 bits. Now, if you change it to 32 bits, this will very likely get rid of your color banding, but it's going to change the gradient, the look of your gradient. It will get rid of the banding, but it's also gonna change Colorama because Colorama is not supported in 32 bits per channel. It says it's not, it still works, but it works differently. So this is not the, my preferred way to go. So I'm gonna stay in 16 and just try to fix it with a little bit of noise. So now what I would do is, is I would save this gradient preset, right? I would take all of these effects on here, animation, save animation preset, save it to your presets folder. So that way, what you can do, if you have just a shape layer that you wanna use in the future, you can just search for your hot gradient and apply it and now you have this nice little gradient preset that you can use whenever you want, right? And now the cool thing about this gradient is that we can transform this if we open up the transform setting with some offset. We can move this left, right, up, down. We can rotate it, we can scale it. So let's say we have some text 
or some shapes that are animating on screen, off screen, we can animate this gradient to move with them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I got these text layers that, that just kind of slide over and it feels like you know the background wants to respond to this, right? Because it's like a fake camera move. So the background wants to kind of be parallax with it. So wouldn't it be really nice if we could just make this background slide over when that happens? And we can, all right? So we're gonna grab this offset here, offset turbulence, and let's just make it match these keyframes. So when these texts slide over, we'll just grab this and we'll just move this turbulence over to the left here, like this, all right? Something like that might work. And we'll just match the easing a bit. And let's see how this looks. And that's pretty cool, right? And then maybe if we kind of um, flip it back, you know, have maybe they want to slide back, I'll just reverse all of these keyframes back a little bit. I'm going to use motion here to clone all the keyframes backwards. And let's just see, maybe it looks like it'll slide back over. So we have this gradient that not only is moving, it's able to move in any direction that we want to infinitely, this offset can go on forever, but it's also evolving over time and it can rotate and scale. You can keep scaling this stuff. You can open up Colorama and cycle through the phase shift or just go back to your fractal noise and just cycle through the evolution options, go to the random seed and just cycle through the seeds until you get a seed that you are happy with. Or you can even animate the seeds and do something really crazy. So there's just so much flexibility with this super hot gradient. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.